Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, there are certain themes I believe in in analyzing sports, right? Frequently, you'll hear me in a boxing video suddenly start referring to baseball, a sport that I think really helps one think analytically about other sports. Let's do that here. What I found is that in baseball, when a guy has a great fastball, right, that fastball is rising, it's hard, hitters can't catch up to it, often, and I mean often, that pitcher ends up in the bullpen, right, not in the starting rotation, but he ends up being a relief pitcher because that pitcher falls in love with his fastball and never learns the rest of the fine art of pitching, right? So you go around major league rosters and you're going to see guys who throw the ball awfully hard, right? Who don't know how to mix up the pitches, right? You don't see these guys until the eighth inning, right? Why? Because as good as their fastball is, they never did learn, right, how to locate a curve, how to throw a good changeup, how to mix it up. I believe the same holds true in boxing. Great hand speed, just like great power, is both a blessing and a curse, right? Yes, when you have lightning fast hands, your punches get there faster, right? On some nights, the other guy is just going to be overwhelmed. I remember I was watching a Joe Calzaghe, Peter Manfredo fight. Calzaghe opens up. All Manfredo could do was get hit. You understood. Calzaghe was just too fast for him. Right? Let me say this, though. Boxing requires more than hand speed. Right? The really good fighters. The Johnny Gonzalez's of the world right, are also dealing in the realm of spacing, right, of leading with not combinations, which fast-handed guys love to flash, but with power shots, right? They're away from the chessboard. So the guy with the quick hands has to start following them around the ring. Sometimes they'll lead that quick-handed guy into traps. Keep in mind, too, there's a problem with combination punching. Now, don't get me wrong. I love combination punchers, right? Ray Leonard is one of my favorite fighters ever. But if I'm throwing a combination, and I'm hitting you, and I'm standing there to get off five or six punches, guess what? You know where to find me, right? Because, as I've said, I'm standing here to get off five or six punches, right? I'm in the pocket, perhaps too long. I thought Gary Russell, who has blindingly fast hand speed, right? He has hand speed on par with Manny Pacquiao. I thought Gary Russell lingered in the pocket too long against Vasyl Lomachenko, right? Now, fortunately for him, and I say this with the utmost of respect, Vasyl Lomachenko doesn't have a lot of power, right? Let me say someone's got to critique Lomachenko, don't they? Vasyl Lomachenko doesn't have a lot of power. Johnny Gonzalez does, right? Johnny Gonzalez is a puncher boxer. Let me repeat that. He's a puncher boxer, right? Pound for pound, this guy hits as hard as Shane Mosley. Right? He ends fights. I'm taking Johnny Gonzalez in this fight. Because I believe Gonzalez is a starting pitcher. I think he's going to come in and he's going to stay just far enough away from Gary Russell. Where Russell's going to have to come up to him 
to Flash's hand speed. Right? He's going to lead Gary Russell into straight right hands, into left hooks, into the kind of punches that ended Gonzalez's fight against Abner Maris. Right? Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. You look at Johnny Gonzalez's resume and he seems to have fought everyone, right? He fought and lost to Ponce de Leon, right? He fought Abner Maris. He recently fought Jorge Arce. I understand Jorge Arce has some wear on the tire, but he's very hard to fight because Arce is the kind of guy who puts his head down. You don't know where the punches are coming from, right? Johnny Gonzalez has seen several different fight styles over a very long career. I'm not sure if I can say the same about Gary Russell. Right? I've looked at Gary Russell's resume here online. Go to BoxRack.com and look up Gary Russell's resume. Now understand, Gary Russell had a decorated amateur career. Right? Gary Russell was highly thought of as an amateur fighter. Why then hasn't he fought better opposition in the pros? Isn't there someone somewhere standing behind Gary Russell? Right? Some manager, some promoter, some advisor, someone who's trying to protect Gary Russell. Right, so Gary Russell broke out into the national consciousness with his fight against Lomachenko. And you notice that Lomachenko was able to use lateral movement and was able to neutralize a lot of Gary Russell's hand speed. He kept Gary Russell moving in that fight. He kept Gary Russell lifting up his front foot, having to reset. Right, you saw Gary's blinding hand speed, but you noticed that when it came to the bigger picture of just fighting, when we were looking at what the hand speed was doing, right, Lomachenko was getting the better of it. He made Gary Russell miss. You wondered if Gary Russell would be more accurate if he slowed down his punches, if he thought things through, right? Let me say this, and it's a hard statement. But sometimes a change of hand speed at different times is more effective than just having top end hand speed and always throwing punches quickly. So I view Gary Russell like I view a great relief pitcher. Right? He's great for one or two innings tops. Because after that, the gimmick's up. Right after that, hitters are going to know, okay, he throws 97. I'll get my timing down. I'll make the adjustments. If I see this guy for more than one at bat in this game, he's going to pay. I believe that's Gary Russell. By contrast, Johnny Gonzalez boxes so well, he'll lull you into forgetting that he's one of the harder punchers in the sport of boxing. Think about it. Johnny Gonzalez has been fighting for years. Think about it. Johnny Gonzalez has fought some big names, right? Hazumi Hasegawa in Japan, right? Rogers Matagua, you might remember him giving all kinds of problems back in the day to Wanma, right? Toshiaki Nishioka, right? You might recall him fighting Nanito Denier and keeping a hand pinned to his head, right? The point is this. With Johnny Gonzalez, you have him fighting championship level guys. Going back several years, he fights Fernando Montiel, another guy who was a victim of Nino Denier. Let's give Denier some respect here. But he fought Fernando Montiel back in 2006. 
Now my point to you is think about it. Here's a guy who's been fighting world-class fighters for quite some time. And yet he still has a KO percentage over 70%. Right? He has the kind of power that when he unveiled it against Abner Maris, it closed the show in the first round, ending Maris's unbeaten streak, right? I think Johnny Gonzalez, like Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao, might have some problems early on, just like batters do against relief pitchers out of the pen when he first sees Gary Russell. Right, it'll take Gonzalez a moment to get over the hand speed gap. But then after that, I believe Gonzalez takes over the fight, just like I believe Floyd Mayweather, after a few rounds, will take over his fight against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Speed kills. There's no question about it. But Gary Russell's going to be lingering around the pocket too long. Gary Russell hasn't fought the kind of high-level opposition other than uh, Lomachenko to really know that staying in the pocket could be detrimental to his health. In my opinion, Gary's a bit hardwired, right? You know, he starts a combination, he's going to finish the combination, right? He's gotten to this stage because of great hand speed. I think Johnny Gonzalez has gotten to this stage because of angles, distance, timing, change of pace, planned power shots. I think Johnny Gonzalez across the board has faced the tougher competition. I'm going to go with the champ here. And let's remember, Johnny Gonzalez is the man wearing the WBC featherweight title. I'm going to go with Johnny Gonzalez over the faster-handed Gary Russell, right? I'll agree Russell's a southpaw. I'll agree Russell's younger. I'll agree Russell is faster, right? But this is not a beauty contest. This is boxing, right? I believe that Johnny Gonzalez is more accurate. I think Johnny Gonzalez hits harder. Johnny Gonzalez has faced the better competition. Johnny Gonzalez is going to know how to neutralize speed with a jab. I like Johnny Gonzalez here over Gary Russell. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.